Good morning and Happy New Year. This is the day the Lord has made, or maybe we should say this is the year the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Our Father in heaven, Lord, we're so thankful for what you've given us. We're thankful for our church, Lord, thankful for all the people that's in it. We just ask, Lord, that you would bless this offering we're about to receive. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
so much. As we prepare our hearts for prayer, I invite you to bow your hearts, stand if you'd like. This is not the position of your body, but the position of your heart. Like to travel? 
Any of you guys like to travel? Okay, so I have my bag, and you guys are going to take a trip with me today. So uh, now let's get the uh, settings straight. So how many like to travel by train? Nobody likes to travel by train. Okay, there's one, two. Uh, how many of you guys like to fly? Okay, so if you've ever been through the airport, you'll hear, I got to wait in front of boarding now. Am I right? And you have no clue as to what has been said other than they are boarding now. <laughs> so you guys have all made it through security. You guys have all boarded and you've all done all those things. And you're now seated on your airplane. And the captain comes on board and he says, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to flight number 2023. We are prepared to take off into the new year. Please make sure your attitude and your blessings are secure. And in a locked right up position, all self-destructive devices should be turned off at this time. All negativity, hurt, and discouragement should be put away. Should you lose altitude under pressure during the flight, reach up and hold down a prayer. Prayers will automatically be activated by faith. Ah. And once faith is activated, you can assist the other passengers. However, on this flight, there is no baggage. Oh, I have this baggage. What are we going to do with it? We're going to find out. There's no baggage allowed on this flight. The captain, God, has cleared us for takeoff for a great destination called greatness. What if this morning, if that was really our call, and God said that we are on this flight, and He is in control no matter what's going on in our life. How many of you guys want to fly on this flight? There's no baggage. There's nothing there. Oh, but wait. So if I have baggage, and I have all these things, if I have to take off and go for an overnight stay, just one night, how many of you guys take a suitcase this big? And it's loaded with every kind of shoes. You know, you have uh, 15 pairs of shoes in there for one night. You have five pairs of clothes. You don't have to point them out. Um, <laughs> so anyhow, we have this baggage here. But how many of you guys, if you're traveling for one week, with your wife to travel with something like that. That's me. Man, my wife and I, we could be gone for a week and that would put all of our clothes in for a week. But here's what happens. We have this excess baggage that comes in. So we're going to look into Hebrews chapter 12. It says, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witness surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance. Oh, the encumbrance, the sin. Hopefully that don't fall. Let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let it run with the endurance of the race that is set before us. Fixing your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. And for the joy that is set before us has endured the cross, despising the shame, and I sat down at the right hand of the throne. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against him, so that you will throw away the weariness and lose heart. So here we have this baggage that we're carrying around. And we carry around baggage with us. And as God reveals things to us, we need to start looking at what we are carrying around. That is called baggage. We need to focus on Jesus. And when we carry baggage with us, sometimes the baggage will hurt us. Sometimes the baggage that we carry around will hurt others. You guys all agree with me on that? So we do we all have some kind of baggage that we're carrying around? Do we all have baggage that we need to get rid of? So when we take a look at that, we have this baggage. It's kind of like 
you know, moving into a new house, or you could move just across the street, or you could move wherever it is, and you always have all this extra junk or baggage that is there. When Phyllis and I moved down here, I think, you know, when we moved from Lamar, you know, short distance, 45 miles. Man, I filled up three or four of those dumpsters of just stuff that was in the house. And then I got here and I filled up probably another two or three. But we all carry around baggage to some degree. And so in Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 6 through 7, it says, On that day I swore to them that I would bring them out of Egypt into the hand. Or into this land, not the hand. Into the land that I've searched for. A land flowing with milk and honey. And the most beautiful land. And I said to them, each of you should get rid of the vile images that you've set in your eyes. So we carry around things in our life that becomes baggage for us. And did you know the longer I carry this baggage, the more it grows. And the more it grows, the heavier it becomes. And so here's what happens. We carry around this baggage with us. And all of a sudden, our baggage is growing. And it continues to grow. And now you have baggage that you're carrying around. So we have this baggage that we carry around in our lives. So what do we carry around that we need to get rid of? Well, we have all these things, and here it is, the first of the year. So we're on this flight, and we already said there is no baggage. But yet, we tend to carry around this stuff in our life. And we carry it around. And sometimes the baggage that we have, it looks like this. And we carry around things in our life that will destroy us. And so let's find out what kind of baggage we have. So we come in and we take a look at the baggage that we have. And each and every one of us might be able to relate to this. So the first one that we carry around is unforgiveness. Anybody ever carry around unforgiveness with them? It's baggage. And unforgiveness, we're going to find out what it does. So we carry around unforgiveness with us. What about this one here? Any of you guys have this baggage? Worries. We carry around worries with us. So let's bring that there. What about this baggage? Past relationships. And we continue to allow these things to come in and destroy our lives. What about... This one, addictions, drugs, alcohol, pornography, gambling, and we can put whatever we want on there, but we have addictions that we carry around with us. So we need to get rid of that. What about this one, hidden secrets? And we carry around these baggage, and nobody might not know what your hidden secrets are, but we carry them around. And we take it to us, and we continue to carry it around. So as we're carrying around these things, what about this one? Anxiety. Any of you guys have anxiety? Did you know that anxiety leads to worries, and worries leads to all those things? Unforgiveness. And did you know what that leads to? It could lead to depression. But we carry around anxieties with us. What else do we have in here? Just stuff in general. And we carry around all these things that are going on in our life. And we think they're important to us. And we carry around stuff. And it continues to get in there. But wait, there's more. What about hurts? Any of us have hurts that we carry around? See, we carry around all this stuff and all this baggage. And so as we carry it around, remember it says that there is no baggage on this flight. So let's get rid of the baggage. And how do we do that? See, in 1 Peter 5, 7, out of the NLT, it says, Give all your worries and cares to God, 
for he cares for you. So if I take this and I get rid of my baggage and whatever it is that's keeping me from a relationship with God or a relationship with others, if I come and say, God, I give you all these things and I lay them at your feet. Lord, I lay my worries. Lord, I lay all these things down at your feet. God, I'm going to get rid of them because you care for me. What about this one? Matthew 11.30. It says, For my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. And I give you light. What if I was to bring these things and just get rid of all this baggage that I have in my life? And I say, God, I need you to just take it from me. Lord, so that I can come into this year and so that I can focus on you and I can get rid of all of the baggage. And then we can go back to what we opened up with. And by the way, I stole that from Facebook. And it says, please copy this and, you know, steal it for others. But see, what happens is our past relationship, it causes anxiety. And we forget what 1 Peter 5, 7 says. Give all your worries and cares to God. Why? Because he cares for us. Can we give everything to God and does he take care of all the baggage in our life? What about, we mentioned unforgiveness. But if I carry around unforgiveness in my life, and that's a big one. Man, Dave, you don't seem to understand. I can't forgive that person for what they did to me. Man, they hurt me bad. That might be true. But what happens is we destroy ourselves with unforgiveness. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 15. It says, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive you of your sins. Wow. But yet we carry it around and say, God, and say, say God, I need you to take this. Lord, take this from me. Lord, help me to be able to forgive. God, help me to be able to live for you. What about in John 20 and verse 23? It says, if you forgive anyone's their sins, Wow, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, you are not forgiven either. What about in Matthew 18 and 35? That is what my Heavenly Father will do if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Wow, God, take all this stuff. Lord, take all this stuff that is in my life, Lord, I come and I just give it to you because this baggage that I'm carrying around and it weighs me down. And I stole these rocks from my daughter. Actually, I, well, actually, I had Amory do it for me. I said, Amory, I need about 10 rocks. And she goes, for what, Pop? I said, for my message. She goes, okay, Pop. So she went out and got some of the bigger rocks. And I said, I need to write on them what we have going on. But our worries, our hurts, these things come into our life and we just continue to carry them around. The addictions. And we forget that God has given us the ability to come to Him and say, God, I lay all this before your throne. Because in 2 Corinthians 5, 16 and 17. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time we ought to, uh, the thought of Christ from merely a human point of view. How differently we know them this. And then in verse 17. That anyone who is in Christ is a new, excuse me, is a new creation. See, we have all this stuff that comes into our life. And we carry around this baggage. And we continue to carry it around. And as we carry it around, that bag just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And next thing you know, you're carrying around luggage. There's nothing wrong with going on a trip. There's nothing wrong with all that. But how many of us come into the year and carry baggage from the last year? Elsa on the Frozen. Or was it Anna that sang it? I don't know. It was Elsa. What did she sing? Let it go! And, you know, let it go. And our little granddaughter, you know, to, it's kind of scary to think that she's 13 now. And that, that was one of her favorite uh, things when she was four. 
And I'm thinking, man, I can't be that, that old. But sometimes we just need to come in and say, God, I give my baggage to you, and I'm going to do what Elsa says, and I'm just going to let it go. God, you have all my baggage. God, you have all this stuff that has come into my life that I've been carrying around. God, I confess it before you, and Lord, I need you to take this from me and my life. The baggage that we carry around. Stuff comes into our life. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 32, it tells us that if we continue to have baggage in our life, it's going to destroy our relationship with Christ. It will also destroy our relationship with others. It says, so I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened by their understanding and separated from the light of God because of their ignorance that is in them due to their hardening of their hearts. Having all, or having lost all sensitivity and have given themselves over to sensuality as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life that you've learned. When you heard about Christ and all the things that were taught with Him. And see, we have all this stuff that just continues to come into our life and it weighs us down. And it's the beginning of a new year. You know what? Don't make a resolution. Say, God, I'm not going to make a resolution, but God, I'm asking for repentance in my life for the things that have weighed me down. Because I think that resolutions, you know, we should open up a gym and call it resolutions. In two weeks, you know, you have the equipment in there, and after the second week, it turns into a taco truck where there's a bunch of tacos in there. Because that's really how our resolutions go. Oh, I promise to get back into shape. Any of you guys ever do that? I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to work out. Man, second week, man, we're eating them tacos, you know, Taco Tuesdays. Oh, hey, buddy. You know, half price tacos, you know. Oh, by the way, El Sarape is closed today, so you can't go there. But uh, just so you know that we have this stuff that comes into our life and we don't let it go. We become self-centered. And in verse 25 of Ephesians chapter 4, it says, Therefore, each of you must put off the falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For are we all members of one body? In your anger, do not let the sin, or it says, in your anger, do not sin, to put it mildly. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. See, here's what happens. Sometimes we allow these things to go down, and the sun is set, and we give the devil a foothold. Folks and I have been married 34 years yesterday, and there's been times that we've not gone to bed angry at each other because I didn't want to wake up angry with her. And it meant that sometimes that we stayed up a long time because I wasn't going to go to bed angry and have her angry at me. Oh no, I didn't want to give that devil the foothold. But here's what we do. We allow the devil to come in and all these things that come into our life, the anxiety, the fears, the unforgiveness, the worries, the hidden secrets that we have, and we continue to carry around our relationships, past relationships, and they end up hurting us, and they end up destroying us. And instead of saying, you know what, it's in the past. Akuna Matata, you know, uh, that was Lion King, you know, Akuna Matata, man, it was in the past. And I love it when the monkey bops him on the head and says, Akuna Matata, you know, it's in the past, forget about it, let it go. But yet we continue to carry these things around with us. And when we do that, we're destroying our relationship with others. And God says, get rid of all this baggage that is in your life. And in verse 30 in Ephesians 4, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed in the day of redemption. And in verse 31, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, 
along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ has forgiven us. What about in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 22? But I say, walk in the Spirit, and you will out of their device or out of their desires of flesh. For the desires of the flesh is against the Spirit. And it goes on and it tells me the things that are against the Spirit of the living God. And it says, get rid of those things. Get rid of those things that are keeping us, that we carry around, that are baggage. Get rid of that and get rid of the baggage so that we can live for Christ. Say, God, come into my life. Forgive me completely of the things that I've done in my life. Lord, the addictions. And you can put whatever addictions that you want down here. I just ran out of room on that rock. But the addictions, we need to get rid of them. And God says, whatever it is that's keeping you. Did you know that if I had TV down here and I watched 10 hours of TV, that's an addiction? Oh, come on, Dave, now you're getting personal. What I'm saying is sometimes we think of addictions as just those four right there. But addictions is anything that we are doing that is keeping us from our relationship with God. So we have these things that come into our life. And in Galatians chapter 5, and in verse 19, see, you thought I forgot about it. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are sexual immorality, impurity, idolatry, witchcraft, hostility, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, passions, and every drunkenness, carousing, oh, carousing, and things like that. He says, I forewarn you, just if I forewarn those who participate in them, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. See, so what we need to do is when we get rid of the baggage in our life, we need to replace it with the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. God, help me to have that joy in my life so that I can come to you and regardless of what's going on in my life, God, I can give you praise with my lips and say, God, thank you that you are in control of my life. God, thank you that you have given me the ability, God, to get rid of these things that I carry around. But see, here's what happens. We bring them to God and sometimes we take all these things and we put them back in our bag and we say, I'm going to carry it around with me because God, you're not big enough to take care of all these things in my life. So we come by and we pick up one or two of them at a time. And God says, just leave them there. He says, have I not told you that I care about you? And cast all your cares and anxiety upon me because I care about you. And see in Philippians 4 verses 7 and 8. And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, ah, think on these things. Worthy of praise. See, we're supposed to think about what God has done for us. Christ says, you know, he says, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give you a yoke that is too heavy to bear. He says, but I want to take all of your baggage. He says, you're on this flight. And he says, I've already told you from the get-go, there is no baggage in 2023. Man, welcome to it. It's gonna be a great year, it's gonna be great destinations. But let's check our attitude. If we're gonna have negative attitudes, if we're gonna have all these things, man, he says, let's get rid of them. And see, here's the cool thing about it. We're going to be transitioning into communion. And what communion is, it's what God has done for us. God, you've done this for me. God, you forgave me of all my sins. God, you cleansed me from all my unrighteousness. Lord, you've gotten rid of the baggage of my life. And see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 
It gives us some instructions. So, brothers, if you would help me, the guys that are going to help me with uh, serving communion, if you would take your places. But here's what happens in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It says, every man ought to examine himself. And if we have this baggage or this stuff that is in our life, he says, make it right with me. And see, the cool thing is that we have open communion. And what that means is, is as long as we have accepted Christ and we've asked God to forgive us of our sins, we can partake of communion. But see, what happens is sometimes we insist upon carrying all this baggage around. And if you guys would please wait until everybody has been served and we'll take communion together. But we carry this baggage around in our life. And God says, I want you to get rid of all the baggage that is there. He says, I have this prepared for you. He says, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. Go ahead, brothers. He says, um, I want you to do this communion. I want you to have this fellowship with me so that you know that I've taken all this baggage from you. What a better way to celebrate the new year than to have communion and get rid of the baggage that is in our life. But see, as they're handing out the elements, we say, God, examine me. God, forgive me for the things that I've done in my life. God, help me to get rid of my baggage because we all have baggage. It's different things for different ones. But we need to examine ourselves and say, God, forgive me because I've allowed this baggage to come in. And I don't know about you, but I want to start this year with no baggage left over from last year. As I said, we all have things that are in our life that we consider baggage. And as the baggage is there and as Christ says, I need you to take care of that. God, forgive me. Lord, help me to draw closer to you this year. Has everybody been served that wants to partake of communion? Okay. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says that on the night that Christ was betrayed, he took the bread and took the cup. And he said, you know, as often as you do this, he says, I want you to know that I love you unconditionally. He says that forgiveness is unconditional. He says, so whenever you look at the communion elements, he says, I want you to remember what I've done for you. It says he took the bread and then he offered a prayer of thanksgiving. Father, we just want to say thank you, Lord, that it was your body. Lord, that was broken for us. Lord, it's because of what you've done for us that we can have forgiveness and we can get rid of the baggage. Lord, as we take the bread, Lord, we ask that you would help us to remember always what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake the bread together. Then it said he took the cup and he said, this is my blood. He says, because of what I'm going to do for you, you have complete forgiveness. He says, my blood will wash away all of your sins, all of your hurts, all of your anxiety, all those things. He says, I want you to take this. And he says, remember what I've done for you. And he says, then he prayed for the cup. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we come. 
Lord, we thank you that it's because of your blood that we have forgiveness. Lord, I thank you that you truly do take away all the baggage in our life. Lord, I ask that you would help us to remember what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake together. If you guys would stand with me, we'll dismiss in prayer. Frank, can you grab that trash can that's inside that sound booth and help me out? And on your way out, Frank will be there and you could put the little communion cups in the trash can. Father, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for being God. Lord, I thank you that on this flight 2023, there is no baggage. Lord, that we know that, Lord, our attitudes and all those are checked in the upright position. Lord, the negativity, Lord, we're asking you, Father, to help us to have a great year. Lord, help us to walk with you. Lord, help us to find reason to give you praise. And Lord, we thank you for another year. And Father, we ask that as we go our separate ways, Lord, that you would help us to live Christ in our communities. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.